define everything I will be talking about, namely, um, what is a TQFT? Actually, it turns out that it's, it's a very natural object and very easy to define. So let's do this in English straight away. Um, let's agree on some, uh, some objects you, I, I'm sure you already work with. Uh, let COB be the category Those objects <coughs> are um, compact, uh, oriented surfaces, which I will typically denote by letter sigma, and morphisms. are compact, oriented, uh, three manifolds, <coughs> or let's say three subordisms, with parameterized boundary. <coughs> so this means what? It means that the, the, the category, the, the objects of the category are just, are just surfaces. And you state that the morphism from this surface to this one is a certain three manifold. The only little detail I want you to take care of is that I'm asking that the, the manifold are endowed with a, with a parameterization. So the surfaces are somewhere abstract and then you parameterize some cobordism between two, the two surfaces. We have some different morphisms. And uh, well, if this is the, so this is the uh, part of the boundary of M, uh, let me call it boundary minus and this boundary plus, because I want, if this phi is a map uh, from uh, sigma minus to sigma plus, Uh, it should be uh, an orientation preserving map on sigma plus and orientation uh, reversing map on sigma minus. Okay? So the idea being that you want to compose the cobordisms, and the way to compose them is you stick another one here and you use the fact that you have parameterized boundary and you group them. Okay. Uh, let's remark already. Uh, some facts about about this category. This is a monoidal category. Well, I'll, I'll try to put some uh, uh, um, this symbol when uh, uh, when I don't. I would not define exactly the, the word, but what what it means is it means that. It has a, a notion of tensor product of objects and morphisms. What's the tensor product? Well, if you want to define the tensor product of two surfaces, you just define it as uh, the disjoint union of the two. And, well, you can easily realize that there is a trivial object with respect to this uh, tensor product, <coughs> empty object. Indeed, if I do this, if I do this, 
I just get this. So the empty surface, which is a surface to me, um, the empty to me is a manifold of any dimension, uh, is, uh, is a trivial object with this, for, for this tensor structure. The second remark is that, so that's one, the second remark is that I can, let's say, embed uh, the group of diffeomorphisms of the orientation preserving diffeomorphism of a surface inside this category in a very natural way. So if I have a, a diffeomorphisms, diffeomorphism of, uh, of sigma, I can produce an element CF, which is a morphism <coughs> from sigma to sigma, uh, CF like uh, cylinder of that, which is basically, if, if this is sigma, you take sigma across the interval, and you parameterize one end by the identity, ident sorry, the identity, and the other end by f. Okay. And you can realize that actually this is a, a morphism uh, of groups. Um, <coughs> so, that's the natural object. So, now I can give you already the definition of TQFT. So, informally, a TQFT is a linear representation. of the category called. That's informal. Formally is a TQFT, topological quantum field theory, is a symmetric monoidal functor. Typically I will use the letter Z from the category cob to the category vect, the category of finite dimensional vector spaces over C. I will be working just on this. So as I, tell, as I told you before, I won't define exactly the things, um, these objects, but I can, I can explain you very easily what, what this means. Uh, I will try to do it as an Italian would do, so where in my hands. Um, if I take sigma here, and I take a cobordism, Sigma to another surface which may be non connected, and that's a manifold representing the cobalt. <coughs> well, if I apply my functor Z, my TQFT, what I should expect to get is well, a vector space associated to this surface, a vector space associated to the surface, and a linear map among them here. So, between them, sorry. So, I will have, if this is sigma minus and, and this surface, which is disconnected, sigma plus, I will get B of sigma minus, B of sigma plus. I should use Z, right? I'm, I'm using B to underline is just the vector space associated to the surface, right? And then, here, a linear map, which I will denote Z of M. So Z of M is a linear map between two vector spaces. That's it. But if you now think about these two remarks, you immediately start seeing why TQFTs are interesting. So, I think this is an important criterion. Why, uh, why care about these things? So, well, if I, 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 I now write a remark which is really speculative to this one. Remark that, ah, sorry, uh, about the monoidality, which I didn't define in, in a sense yet. Well, I want this vector space here to be the vector space of the, the upper surface tensor the vector space of the lower surface. Here it is a disjoint. That's one item. It was symmetric. Symmetric is um, about the fact that the tensor product I defined there is uh, symmetric, and meaning that sigma 2 tensor sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 tensor sigma 2. And you have a symmetry also in the category of vector spaces, which is just exchanging in a trivial way the vectors. And you want the function to respect this thing. So, um, so the remark now is specular to the one there. It is that, well, because of this property, because, the, because of the fact that you're asking that for every disconnected surface you want to get the tensor product of vector spaces, then V 
of the empty set must be the trivial object in, in regular vector spaces. And, well, these are as an immediate consequence that uh, now I can take a closed three manifold. So boundary of is empty. And, uh, well, I can see there's a dwarfism between the empty set and the empty set. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention an important point. I don't want just all the dwarfism, I want them up to an equivalence relation, which is uh, just diffeomorphism. Okay? So, up to, up to, uh, up to positive diffeomorphism. Okay? So, so if I look, if I take, so, uh, a coordinate from the empty set to the empty set, it's basically a diffeomorphism class of, positive, of oriented men. And what is the diffeomorphism due to the mark lines at the end? It should, yeah, well, it should commute. So you, you can write down a commutative diagrams of uh, manifolds with parameterization of the boundaries. Um, so if I apply now z to that, what I get is that z of m should be a homomorphism, a linear map from z of the empty set, so from c to c. And that's canonically a complex number. So this is actually what people call quantum invariance. It depends only, by definition, it depends only on m up to diffeomorphism. So it's an invariant of m. And that's the definition of quantum invariance. Um, the second point, the second point of the remark is that now I could do the same play uh, there, with the second point here. And if I play Z to CF, well, I get a linear map uh, between uh, V of sigma and V of sigma. <laughs> and what I get here, it's actually, it turns out, um, that it, it factors through isotopy relation. Um, so here I said f in diffeo plus. But actually I could have said uh, f in uh, pi zero of diffeo plus <coughs> of sigma, which is the same as the mapping plus root of sigma. So it turns out it, it, it factors under the isotopy relation. And this means that you get a, a, a representation of MCG of sigma. That's actually the, what we call quantum representation. OK? So I hope, yes? So the V of sigma does not depend on the uh, time and trace of sigma? Does not. That's just in the problem. Yes. Uh, other questions? <coughs> so actually, that, that's it. Uh, I hope in this three black course you, you see the interest of, of, of TQFTs. If you ever have one TQFT, all uh, immediately you have associated to it an invariant of three manifolds and a representation of mapping class groups. So it's it's worth studying these options. I think. And now, I guess that the next question is, well, OK, do they exist? And well, if you're already tired, which is quite probable, uh, you can try and do as an exercise to search at least for one or even two TQFTs. There are two which are easy to find. Uh, but otherwise, uh, let me mention the following. fact, for every integer r greater than or equal to 2, uh, so ratio ticking and Turayev, and I also want to mention uh, Blanchet, Habegger, uh, Masbaum, 
and Vogel uh, constructed interesting examples of TQFT. You have very interesting <coughs> I will denote that uh, denote them like this: sigma goes to v r of sigma. Just to remind uh, v two r, sorry. If the, the two is uh, it's just a matter of uh, having the same notation as as the v h and v paper. Um, so the, out of this you get uh, pressure ticking derived invariance of three manifolds. And you get people calling just quantum representations of the mathematical groups of sigma. Actually, well, what is R? R is an integer greater than or equal to two. No, but in the conclusion. Sorry? In the conclusion. In, in the what? I, I don't understand. I'm not sure. Where do you use R? Oh, uh, it is just that they, they, there is one TQFT for every R. Okay. R is a, that well, subscript is an R. <coughs> the subscript represents R. Yeah. So uh, since I have one TQFT for every R, I'm, I'm trying to distinguish the names of the vectors I get for every TQFT. What they are, so you can't really answer the question. I, I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying what they are. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what's the, the story. And then later on I will. Okay. I want just to... Tell you there are examples. I will give you the, the idea of the construction of these things. Actually, it's not easy to, to give these constructions. I will do it later. I want to give you now the, the bottom line of my talk, and later I will go to, to more technical contents. Mm -hmm. But uh, so the truth is that actually people people Rishikin and Turai first constructed the invariants and then uh, write to the PFT. So I'm a little bit uh, changing the the way chronologically the story goes. And the second thing is that actually these representations are, in truth, they are projective. And uh, the reason for that, I, I say it, but I don't write it, is, is that in truth, these two QFTs do not apply to the category COB, which I described, but do apply to a category which is a mild variation of COB. Namely, the objects are surfaces, comma, a certain Lagrangian subspace of the homology, and the cobalt is now slightly decorated. So, but the philosophy is really the same. The, the, the total effect of this is that you get projected representation of mapping class groups. I don't want to, to deal with these technical details here. So, uh, I told you they are very interesting, but there are, there are some buts. Uh, you may wonder whether this representation of mapping class groups uh, are injected, for instance, are faithful. Uh, it is still an open question whether mapping class groups are faithful, are linear groups. But it is known that uh, for every gamma in sigma, simple closed curve, um, t, the 10 twist along gamma power r acts trivially on b to r of sigma. So they are very interesting, but this is already an answer to the question: Is it, are they, they do they provide an injective representation of mapping class groups? No, they don't. Um, but on the other side, for every f in the mapping class group of sigma, non-central, uh, there exists an R, possibly very big, such that uh, f acts non-trivially on V uh, an R zero on V R V two R sorry for every R greater than R zero. This is what is called uh, asymptotically asymptotic faithfulness. And it's due to Anderson and uh, Friedman and Wong separately. Okay. So 
they are not injected, but they tend to be. The more you go on, the, little, the smaller is the curve. Now, what's our result? I want to give you just a statement, but of course I won't, to, I won't give you exactly who these two PSTs are. And then, then later I'll, I'll try to give you an idea of how to construct these this TPFTs. Um, so our, our result is the following. Oh, yes, I, I want to mention also another thing. Uh, another fact is that uh, V2R of sigma is a module over the, uh, the scale algebra of sigma. This is the object has, which has been introduced uh, by Helen yesterday, and Tang Le has uh, already uh, rediscussed this today. Well, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and it has been proved by, by, by Francis and Helen that. that it is irreducible. And I remember, uh, I recall that there is a, there is a map from the regular function uh, of, the, of the, the corrective variety of sigma into this scale algebra, which has been already produced in other talks, so for the moment I will not recall it. And it's central, with central image. The scale algebra is not commutative, but the, the, the image of this map, this is a commutative algebra, algebra of functions on, on some variety. The, the image of the map is central. So if you act on an irreducible representation, you must act by, by Schur's lemma, <coughs> you must act by lambda times the identity. So if I have a function here, and then I act on V to R, F acts like lambda times the identity. So what I get is not me, actually. It's, it's uh, Francis and Helen who explained us uh, the story. Uh, uh, you get. This lambda is a function of f. So you get associated to V2R a function on the space of functions on the correct variety. A function on functions. So if I ask you what's an example of function on, of, of functions, well, you would tell me probably evaluation on a point. Right? It's the easiest example of function on functions you could imagine. And actually, that's the case. And lambda is evaluation. Now, you have, if I ask you what's, the, what's a point in this, in this variety, probably there is a, a kind of special point at the trivial character. So, exactly the, the character Julian was studying the preceding talk in the case uh, genus 2. Okay, um, so that's about the, let's say, the standard brush speaking thriving variants. Um, now, our result is the following. <coughs> so, here I am. Uh, well, I already gave you the author, so I won't repeat it. Um, so, for every r greater than or equal to 2. There exists uh, a TQFT associated to sigma, a vector space which I will write like, see, like this. For a moment, I put a zero here, and the, the notation will be clearer in a second, uh, with the following properties, which are not characterizing properties. I'm just uh, mentioning some properties which make this uh, TQFT interesting to us. Uh, well, first, the associated quantum invariants are related 
to, to some other invariants which already existed, and they are known as Kashayev invariants. I'm deli deliberately vague on, on this statement. I can be more precise about it, but that's for later. Uh, second, recall that there, that the reason why this representation were, were not uh, faithful is that already for dentists they have finite order. That's not the case in our case. So for every gamma in sigma, simple closed curve, uh, gamma acts, sorry, the dentist along gamma acts with infinite. order on this guy. Um, so that's a really exciting sign to us. I mean, in a sense, we were not able to find the evident elements in the kernel of these representations. Yet, uh, we cannot claim anything about the faithfulness or something <coughs> like this. I'm not claiming this. But still, it, it's, it's a good sign, let's say. And in truth, the reason of this zero is that, in truth, more in general, for every, actually, we have a, 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 a many parameter family of TQFTs. Actually, uh, more in general, we have a, a TQFT on the category of, let's say, <coughs> homology. Decorated uh, cubordisms. Which means in, in, in practice for, for the purpose of the representation, it means that for every cohomology class omega in the one cohomology of sigma with coefficients in this triangle billion group, uh, you have uh, we have VR sigma omega, OK? So the 0 there was the, just the case of the 0 cohomology class, but you can pick any cohomology class here. OK, you could, you, apparently one could be scared by the fact that we're, we're making things more complicated on the cohomology class with strange you know, groups and so on. But one of the nice features of this story is that here we have a continuous parameter family of Story. So the kind of reasonment which we didn't uh, do yet, but uh, one could hope is that try and do an, an argument of the kind that we can produce, uh, say, faithful open representations by considering the open sets where uh, where this this uh, open set of, of homology classes where. Um, the mapping class group, some element of the mapping class group uh, act with infinite order and intersect them, hoping to get a non empty intersection. So, the kind of uh, arguments using the exploiting the topology of C, uh, or 2Z, in, in, instead of just having discrete uh, families of representation. So, why I'm mentioning this stuff with the cohomology? Because it relates to this last, to this last uh, comment here. And the comment is the following. Well, before we had that V to R sigma is a module, uh, was a module on SK of sigma, the sky in algebra. In our case, something slightly less is true. So R V R of sigma omega for a generic cohomology class is a module over, well, not the whole algebra, SK in algebra, but over a certain subalgebra, which I can tell you immediately what it is. And I'm playing the same game as here. So uh, the embedding is still true, and its image is in this subalgebra. Uh, you get so you you get an action oh is a module is a an irreducible module. And composing these two things you get an action over over uh, the endomorphisms of the R S 
sigma omega. And a regular a function f goes to, to some lambda of f times the identity. And lambda of f is evaluation on a certain point of the corrective variety. Which point? Well, the abelian representation associated with the cohomology class. You can, you can think of a cohomology class as an abelian representation of the pi 1 of the surface. Um, so in a sense, it's a, it's a generalization of the preceding construction. If in the corrective variety you move from the trivial representation on the abelian locus. OK, so, um, so for the moment, it's just a statement of the results. And, and uh, the reasons why we think this, this construction are interesting, I would like to give you an idea, an idea of how actually these V2 R were, were constructed. And the idea is the same for our case, except that the initial data are different. And there are some more technical difficulties. So, this is a very good moment to stop and ask if there are questions. What does non semi simple mean? Oh, uh, the non semi simple uh, refers to the fact that one of the key ingredients uh, to construct this story is a category of representations of a certain algebra. And in our case, as opposed to the initial case, this category of representation is non semi simple. So you may have modules which contain sub modules, but they are not direct summons. Of the bigger uh, that's that's one way of answering this question. Um, but yes. Oh, sorry, I forgot to make to the define. Well, remark. Let's say this here regarding. Uh, look at this relation. This is a Skyn relation you've seen plenty of times. And remark that the Z2 homology class of the link on this left side, hand side, is the same as Z2 homology class of this link as that of this link. So remark that every link has a Z2 homology class. And this relation is homogeneous. Okay? So what I'm saying is that actually the scaling algebra of sigma is in truth graded by the H1 of sigma with coefficients in Z2. Okay? Because the defining relations are homogeneous with respect to this gradient. And uh, well, and with And now you can tell what what uh, SK is zero is just uh, the part of skeins which have total homological degree zero. A typical example is if you start taking taking skeins which are made of da of two strands running parallel to each other. Okay, so that's about the raw acts on our on our story and and the statement is is. Further questions? Yes. That's a very good question. Uh, here, for, for generic omega, by generic I mean uh, non-integral, um, it's uh, r power 3g minus 3. Uh, when r is odd. When r is even, it's the same number divided by 2 power g minus 1. It's a, it's a technical difference. And where omega, when omega is 0 instead, finally, I cannot tell you the answer. I don't know it. I don't know the answer. I know it is finite dimensional, but I, we didn't compute it yet. And it's work in progress, and uh, we cannot tell you the dimension. Other questions? Oh, yes. Uh, by, the, by the way, this three, r power 3g minus 3 is very similar to the dimensions of um, the modules uh, uh, Francis and Helen constructed to to try and realize points, uh, representations of this kind algebra lying over any uh, point of the character variety. 
still, that, that's a technical point. We are working a different roots of unity as them, so we cannot, formally, we cannot compare the results, unfortunately. OK. Uh, so how do you construct a TQFT? So if you, if you fell asleep, I, you, can, you can try and wake up. Because now I'm going to go back to just uh, general, general arguments. So how to, to do TQFT? <coughs> Well, there is a very nice construction. Due to Blanchet, Abeg, Malcolm, and Fougère, who goes more or less as follows. Suppose you have an invariant of closed oriented three manifolds. All manifolds are compact oriented uh, without any further mention. So uh, you can think of this as a map from the set of morphisms in, ma in our category called uh, from the empty to the empty with values in uh, C. Okay? So suppose you're, you're given this. And you want to start from this to get a full TQFT. This is, I mean, if you had a TQFT, you would have this particular, as stated in the point one of one of the preceding remarks. So let's try to, to play the game of trying to build the TQFT out of this. Well, universal construction goes as, uh, as follows. To every sigma, you can associate a vector space, which is an infinite dimensional one. It's the C span of, uh, let me write it like this, of the morphisms going from the empty set to sigma. It's a fancy way of saying it's a vector space generated by the manifolds bound in sigma from below, OK? And I could also do another thing, do new prime of sigma, which is the vector space generated <coughs> by the morphisms from sigma to empty set. And that's the other thing you would do. Okay. Of course, these are infinite dimensional vector spaces. Now, uh, what you can do once you have Z, uh, the, the invariant, is, is that you can produce a bilinear pairing uh, from new prime to new, just by stating, OK, if I take one guy here and one guy here, I send them to Z of n composed with n, namely, I cut them, I have an invariant, I compute it. It's a bilinear pairing, you, you, and extend it linearly, of course. But new and new prime are infinite dimensional vector spaces, so you don't want to do nothing about it. But uh, you, can, you can kill, in a sense, all the manifolds which cannot be seen by this pairing. What does it mean formally? It means that you can kill by the, the kernel of, the, of this uh, pairing. So you can define V of sigma to be mu of sigma modulo the right kernel of this bilinear form. So you kill all the manifolds on the bottom which uh, would give you zero with whenever, whatever vector you put on the other side. And similarly, for V prime, you define it as new prime modulo the left kernel of the pair. OK? Now, there's no guarantee in general that you will get a uh, finite dimensional vector space. And there's no guarantee in general that you will get a TQFT even if it is finite dimensional. So you could, it could happen that you get something such that uh, if you take a disconnected surface, the associated vector space is not the tensor product of the result. So there are plenty of difficulties still, but the idea, the key idea is this one. Uh, in a sense, you're killing every, every guy you cannot see. And the way of seeing, observing your, your objects is using the invariant. Um, so if Z, the initial invariant, has nice properties, 
to say nice surgery properties. Then D, well, D of sigma gives you a TTFT. I mean, well, nice properties should include that the Vs are finite dimensional and that V of sigma 1 union of sigma 2 should be the tensor product. <coughs> and the fact that you get a functor actually is for free. Because think about uh, these, these things, V of sigma, they are already functors. Um, but into, into, into the category of uh, infinite dimensional vector spaces, possibly, and they are not necessarily monoidal. But they are functors because whenever you have a cobordism from a sigma to sigma one to sigma two, you you can put it on top of any cobordism below, and you get something going up to sigma two. So uh, they are tautologically functors. This is the nice part of the, the, the construction. The hard part is to really identify these nice surgery properties. And it's really about your starting in life now. So you can try now, if you're tired, to build your own TQFT, starting from whatever environment you like. The only condition you should satisfy is the natural one. It should be a map from here to here. It should be multiplicative by this joint unit. That's all you need to have at the beginning. But in most of the cases, you will get quite trivial results. So this is the, the, the very nice point of the, the, the rush ligament right construction, is that there are invariants to start with, such that you get non-trivial results. And uh, well, I should mention, I, well, of course, I should mention Witten, whose ideas were crucial to the development of this story. Um, if you have a, a T2FC, yes. where do you know what it will have to <laughs> and you forget about it, um, and then try the construction. Um, no, you don't get necessarily back the initial TQFT. There are examples of TQFTs which has, have the same invariance, already in dimension to 1 plus 1. Same invariance, but different vector spaces. But if at least one of them, if you have two such TQFTs, and at least one of them is non-degenerate, meaning that the vector space associated to sigma is exactly the span of the coordinates, then they, are, they go inside. Do you get some projection or some subset of the original TQFT back? Uh, yeah. I should think about it. I, I was about to say yes, but I should think about it. I don't want to say false statement. Um, OK. So what does nice surgery properties mean? Uh, I still have 14 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. OK. Uh, what does nice surgery properties mean? Well, in truth, in truth, uh, the construction of Rush Viking to Live, and also in our case, doesn't start from the category of cobordians, co I described at the beginning, but actually the category is a little bit decorated. So in truth, uh, we use, uh, we, I mean, all the quantum topologists, we use uh, an enlarged, enlarged version of cob. Uh, let's not it cob C. C is a certain set, whatever, well, I'll tell you later on which set I'm thinking about. Um, and namely, uh, same objects, but, but uh, the manifolds, uh, coordinates, may contain C links. What is a C link? Well, the C link is a frame oriented link L in M in the board is M um, endowed with a map with what people call a uh, coloring. So with a map from the the connected component of L into to the set C of colors. Everything up to a certain degree. Up to a certain degree, I mean, it's, I can move the link up to a certain degree. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a mild generalization of the preceding set. 
But one immediate remark is that if you repeat, if you repeat the remarks which I have done here for this new category, this larger category, uh, the point one, which was if you have a TQFT, then you have invariance, now tells you that if you have a TQFT, you have invariance of links in three manifolds, of C links in three manifolds. The problem remains the same, so uh, can, can you find such invariance? Uh, can you really find TQFTs? Um, uh, in particular, one gets, if you ever have a TQFT for the category called C, uh, you get uh, invariance of C links in S3. Then you take S3 with the links inside, it's a coordinate from the empty set to the empty set. You apply the functor, it gives you a number, it's an invariant. Fine. <coughs> so now the story is the, the following. You start from invariant of links, and you try to make them invariants of manifolds, and then you apply the universal construction, hoping that it will work, and it will go fine. Now, uh, Okay, so what invariant of link could you, take, could you pick? I think you, you're already guessing that uh, in the RT case, in the standard brush picking drive case, so, uh, let Q be a potential y pi over R. So I'm fixing this root of unity just for the sake of comparing um, results. Actually, in that case, I can fix any root of unity, not just this one. Um, and let C be, let me, let me say this strange thing, let C just be uh, a one element <coughs> set. It's a, it's a set composed by a single element, single element called S1. Uh, well, and I need an invariant of C colored links in, S, in S3. Well, it's the Jones polynomial. Uh, so I take, a, I take the invariant such that if I have a link colored by, by S1, um, it, it is equal to this. And uh, the second relation. OK? In truth, people don't write this, this one because, of course, it's completely unusable. But the reason why I'm saying that is that actually S1 is an element of a bigger category C, which is the one we use in our construction. So in this sense, also, uh, is the construction is a generalization of the preceding one. And now, suppose, actually, it is true in the rest to the case, in our case, suppose that uh, Z, your invariant, the one, the one you want to start with, uh, uh, has a nice property, uh, namely uh, has has a cubic color. What do I mean by that? Uh, it exists uh, a C link. L, let me say it like this, L omega, in uh, the solid torus, such that, let me write it like this, if I, suppose I, I start and apply the universal construction to my invariant C, and I get uh, some, some vector space associated to sigma, and the, the, the condition I want is that this, this link should have this nice property. It should be that uh, if I consider the vector represented by this cobordism. This is a cobordism from the empty set to the surface, which is a torus. OK? So it's a vector in V of, uh, it's a vector in v of S1 times S1. Well, if I consider this vector, this vector should be the same as the vector associated to the cobordism obtained by, by switching the torus, so taking the other torus, uh, empty. Okay, why am I, am I asking this strange condition on my invariant? This is the kind of nice surgery property I want. Well, it means the following. It means that, suppose you want to define V of sigma, sigma a connected surface. 
Well, there is a favorite manifold bound in sigma, which is uh, the handle body. Any handle body. And any other manifold, connected manifold, bounded sigma, can be related to the handle body via uh, uh, surgery. Two surgeries, just that. So what I'm saying is that this, this strange link here inside, whatever it is, will allow me to represent a surgery on my handle body. Because making a surgery on my handle body is just replacing the surgery locus by this strange link in there. So if I ever have this property, what, what can I do is that uh, I can reduce V of sigma to just uh, to, 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 um, to understand V of sigma, I don't need to consider all the three manifolds, I just need to consider links in a handlebar. So if uh, Z has it can be called off. Then, recall that V of sigma so was the C span of the manifolds bounding sigma from below. Actually, uh, so modulo some, uh, some relation. Now, if I have the Kirby color, I can pick my surface sigma and draw it in S3. And I can think about the handle body, it bounds in S3. Call it H. What I'm saying is that any manifold bound in sigma can be obtained by surgery of, along some link in H. And if I have this strange surgery property, it means that instead of taking a, a manifold bound in sigma, I can just take the link representing the surgery over the manifold, followed by omega in, in H. So what I'm saying is that this is the same as the vector space generated by C links in H, but then I need to understand what's the relation here. And well, you can imagine that if I have this property, I can do the same on the other side, so for, for V prime. And this means that every link in V prime will, will turn out to be, every mm, element in V prime will turn out to be a surgery of another uh, link, C colon link, in H prime, the complement of H. So, the relation here will be L is equivalent to zero if and only if for every um, L prime in H prime I compute the invariant of the link L union L prime and I get zero. What I'm saying is that if you have this surgery property you can reduce to an analysis about links in handle bodies in S3. And it's a property, it becomes a property about invariance of uh, links in S3. The favorite invariant there is the Jones polynomial, and the story works and produces. So if you now compute V of sigma this way, you can do this. It turns out to be finite dimensional. That's the way after uh, uh, it is done in, in the Ash and V paper. Uh, v of sigma is a T15, let's say. Actually, for, for experts, I'm lying here because of this problem of the projective uh, anomaly, but I'm, I'm really hiding this under the rug. Um, but so the story here is to, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm three minutes left, so the story is, is to uh, pick another invariant of links and repeat the construction. So um, take this, the C vector space is generated by links in a handle body. And you have the C vector space generated by means in the complement of the body. I'm, I'm really realizing my handle body in the complement S3. And quotient by a, a relation which is saying that a linear combination of links, a formal linear combination of links here, should be zero whenever, whenever for, a, for each possible link outside, if I compute the invariant of the union of the joint union of two links, I get zero. This is a strong equivalence relation, killing a lot of stuff. And if you start with good link invariance, you will get finite dimensional objects. And you're in a very good shape to get a TQFT. Actually, you do get a TQFT in the case of the standard representative driving variance. And you do get also TQFT in our case, modulo some further work. Uh, 
uh, let me just tell you what the set of colorings is and what the link invariant is, and then and we land. So in our case, so C is the category of representations of a certain algebra, which is infinite dimensional algebra called the quantum group, the unrolled version of the UQSO2 quantum group. And it turned, it's not important for you to know what, what this is now, but uh, what I want to mention is that C is a, is a, a monoidal category. of vector spaces and C is the disjoint union of category C alphas Oops. and these subcategories are such that if you take the tensor product of elements in one or in the other you fall in the sum so it is graded by C modulo to Z okay and in particular, C alpha is semi simple for alpha not 0 or 1, but 0 and 1 are some kind of critical subcategory. And uh, there is an object called this one which belongs exactly to C1. Okay? And uh, well, there is a general result due to Rechidikin and Turayev, which allows you to produce link invariants out of any uh, ribbon category. This is a ribbon category. You can apply Rechidikin and Turayev invariants uh, construction and you get invariants associated to C links, where C in this case, in our case, is going to be this. Well, for experts, if you do this, you get zero. So you have to do a modified Rechidikin and Turayev construction. And, 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 well, the fact that you get zero is the reason why it has not been done before. Uh, after this modifying Rechtik interrupt construction, you still can define invariants as associated to links colored by this, this category. And using this invariant exactly as I, as I tried to show you before, you get a TQFT. Uh, and you can guess, now I, I, cannot, I don't have time to explain, you can guess that the, the origin of the cohomology class is coming from the fact that this category is graded and is graded exactly by the Abelian group uh, used as in, in the homology class. Thank you very much. is faithful model of the center uh, already for R equals 2. Uh, but this is false for genus 2 surface. For mm. So uh, there is hope for, for that to be true, but mm. I don't know how to prove it. Mm. Yeah. How easy are you to compute? That's a good question. They are less easy than the standard uh, uh, restricting to right so invariants. There is a picture way, but the kind of difficulty you face is, is similar to the kind of uh, difficulty you face when you want to compute the color of Jones polynomial. Jones polynomial is easy. Color of Jones is slightly less because if I give you a crossing of an n colored link and an n colored link, the kind of scale relation you have is a sum of some coefficients, and then you get something like this, right? And you have this kind of formulas, yes. Uh, but I don't know if you call them easy or not. But yes, there are fusion formulas like this. Ah, yes. Um, among our colors, among our colors, there is a, 
So the, this is one color that corresponds to Jones. Don't really wonder. There is another color called V0, which, well, according to the parity of R, let's say it, it belongs to C0. Okay? <coughs> so it's a degree zero object. We call it the Kashaev module. Uh, it's an R dimensional vector space, it's a module over all this stuff. And if you take a link in S3 and you color every component with this module and you compute the invariant, you get exactly Renat's invariance. So the invariants which are the base of the, of the Warren conjecture. I don't know. I didn't think about it. I don't know. It's a good question. Thanks. Thanks, Francois, again.